What are you guys rowing? Um, can I get you to clap three times, please? What's that for? Uh, it's singing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just for my pleasure, it, it does have a... It's to, to sync the sound. Yes, yeah, it's to sync the sound. <laughs> okay. Tell me about a situation you had to overcome where you had no choice but to be strong. Yeah, there was a, I guess, a particular situation in which I fell in love with my best friend, female best friend, and it sent me into a bit of an identity crisis. I felt I've dealt with death in my family at a very young age. Um, I lost my dad, my brother, my aunt, and like my granddad in like a very short period of time. Before I was born, until I was 16, like my dad was a heroin addict. I'd say the biggest mental challenge I've had in recent years, or for as long as I can remember, was the second lockdown when everything closed again. Mm. Because I was working from home and there was nothing to do after work, yeah. I just felt like I was in a hole. Getting over that was quite difficult because obviously she was my best friend and I still wanted to be around her. Um, so, but again, it was messy because I don't think I dealt with it very well. So I, again, I don't know if that's being strong or not. I got through it and I am stronger as a result, but I wasn't necessarily strong at the time, you know? You have no choice but to be strong because your family almost is at the point where it can almost like fall apart because of the loss. And my mum, as a result, was like manic depressed and like really struggling to, to cope with that. So um, for me, it was, you know, all the way through childhood and then it didn't just stop when he stopped using drugs, it didn't just stop for me. Yeah. Um, there was, you know, residual sort of effects from that, you know, that, that overspilled into like earlier sort of adulthood. And even now, to be honest, even now there's times when I struggle. So my husband was called over to the hospital within like an hour and he was taken into a room and said, we're really sorry. Angela's got liver cancer, it's probably terminal. She's only got three months to live. I broke down and I didn't feel like I had anyone around me. Like literally every day I felt like I was gonna die for some reason, it was like mad. And like so many thoughts racing in my head, I was so negative, I couldn't like think positively, I couldn't see a way out of this, this like, like place. Um, I was expecting my first son and um, a couple weeks before, you know, he was due, we went to the hospital for one of the final checkups and unfortunately he'd passed away. I had a very bad time when my brother died, he was only 52 and emotionally it was very hard for me. I went through a period of depression. There was a situation where I just wanted to end my life. I literally wanted to give up on everything. Because I literally had like no hope of like nothing. I felt like I was getting depressed and then what was making me even more depressed was the fact that I was thinking I've got a good life so why am I feeling depressed? His mum still had to give birth as well and you know it was a very very sort of testing time because it's like you know not just myself but the mum family, everyone is expecting this child to come into the world and you know not only have you got stuff there waiting for them but you know there's just this whole assumption that everything's going to be fine, everything's going to be cool and um, obviously that didn't happen. How did you overcome it and what has been the major factors you've been in? I took everything I could, every therapy, every counselling course, every phoning up everybody to get help. How I got to that stage, I think um, it's living with myself, it's um, accepting myself, it's like allowing myself to explore and allowing myself to fall in love with girls um, and speaking to other LGBT people as well really helped um, to feel like I'm not, not a freak or like not a weirdo and that is, it is normal. So what that initial situation taught me was like, nothing can f*** with me. Nothing's, nothing is going to beat me. Nothing's gonna finish me. Like I'm hit, I'm not getting taken out by anything. Like I take all of these things as signs or as indications to like, 
live my life even larger, louder, make more noise, whatever. I've overcome hard times by exercising regularly, eating healthily, keeping in touch with people and um, getting as much support as I could. Basically, I had one conversation with my wife and she was like, it doesn't matter what you've got, there's nothing wrong with actually feeling how you're feeling. So in terms of staying strong, I'd say, rather than saying I stay strong, I just found ways to kind of clear my head so that I could stay focused and actually be happy and have things to look forward to. So then what I started to do was kind of scheduling things to do to actually look forward to. Through like the strength of like prayer and having my mum support and like just feeling like, right, like this is the end. I felt like, don't know, one day I woke up again. It's just like these moments like that just come to you. It's like a light bulb moment. I had to find myself. I really had to find like, who is Miriam? And I was thinking like, I was actually capable of doing like so many positive things, but because of my confidence, it did bring me down. So what I had to do, I literally had to think like, what do I want to do in life? What do I want to achieve? What can I do to actually achieve those? So I literally started doing these kind of things, write notes on a piece of paper. Like every single day I used to like give myself a positive feedback and then just to overcome it. So ever since that day, I've been like improving each day and not caring. That's one thing that people do. We care about so much what people say. I don't care what people think about me. And I stop caring and I literally just do me. I don't know, for me, like when I think about my favourite memories, it's like that Christmas where you had all of those family members there, a big Christmas and, um, you know, eating good, music's good, we're having fun. So I feel like for me, like, again, it's just that drives, that's my drive. I want that and I want to be able to do it better. I, I think, you know, it's a combination of time. Um, for me, it's about consciousness, you know, just being conscious of who you are and your habits and you know, um, why you act ways you act and why you do things you do and what you can work on and where you can grow. Don't you think what you just explained the whole process, that mm. is part of being strong? Again, well, again, you making it out to the other side, that is part of being strong. Well, this is the interesting thing. This is why I say strong is a really interesting word because um, what classifies as weak? Because, um, people think that crying is weak, but it's really not. Um, is being weak not getting out of bed? I don't know. Like, so what is it that classifies being strong? Is it that you can just deal with situations and they roll off, like is water off your duck's back? Yeah. Resilience. Resilience, exactly. And I, I have- I think it's more about resilience though. Okay, yeah. yeah, so I think, but it's only through having those experiences that um, I've become more resilient.